What's up lads, you with the Budget Mark and welcome to a new video. So as you saw by the introduction, we're going to be talking about rebel defections, guys. All kinds of rebel defections. So lately, EU4 seems really blobby. And I mean, it's more blobby than an American Walmart up in here, if you know what I'm saying. It's crazy how like West Africa, the Ottomans, every region seems to just blob out and can be composed of just very powerful entities in each region. This is a great tactic to actually have huge amounts of land defect, or in other words, do unparalleled amount of damage to a blob. So in this case, it's only 1518. And, you know, the Commonwealth is a pretty typical nation here who, if they don't get wrecked by the Ottomans, they're going to be very large. I've just formed Russia at, at Admin Tech Ting as the nation of Russia here, you can see. And we're looking at the Commonwealth has just formed at Admin Tech 10. In this case, we're going to do one of the larger, more consistently available defections, which is going to be Lithuania. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can achieve this if you are able to defeat the Ottomans in just about one war. So every time you do a large defection, large or small, we're going to talk about uh, later on in this video about how there can be some more valuable minor defections which can be surprisingly satisfying and valuable but in this case every single nation is going to be unique and it's unique in the sense that they need to have their own cause so the cores go away based on the nation and based on the cultural groups lithuania is actually a baltic nation and it means that these will take about 200 years to go away if you have cores in any of this obviously lithuanian primary will never go away but cores on another cultural group that Lithuania begins with will go away upon 50 years of the tag not existing. So this particular defection has to be achieved within 50 years of the well, um, nation being annexed or in this case uh, the Commonwealth forming. So with that being said, this is a big boy defection here. I'm going to show you guys exactly what we need to do. And this isn't going to be a focus on the war. You can see I have more than enough available here to uh, win this war. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And we'll, we'll jump back here when we're about ready to talk about peace deals. All right, boys, here we are. Let's talk peace deal. We've got a low enthusiasm Commonwealth at 62 war score. And I am using the day's fault CB. This means I can take pretty much anything I want. So... We could, uh, you know, theorize that you're struggling, the Commonwealth is powerful, or maybe we're playing on very hard difficulty, and it's about time we peace out, okay? Now let's analyze the peace deal here. What we're, the goal is to have Lithuania defect, right? So as you guys know, Lithuanian rebels inside of the PLC don't exist. The goal is to spawn Lithuanian rebels with inside of our own territory. So if we take some Lithuanian culture here, Lithuanian rebels will spawn in our own territory, then we need them to walk into the Commonwealth, so the Commonwealth cannot liberate them. So one thing you might think to do is something like this. If we take something like this, their rebels will spawn. Okay, and they could walk into these, but statistically, and in terms of likelihood, there are all of these Lithuanian cores that are gonna be attracted to. So if they, they let's say we take this peace deal, they could spawn here, they could walk south, the Commonwealth cleans them up without going here. So what we're gonna do is take a very shrewd, creative, smart way of piecing this out so we can guarantee that this is going to work. And considering the Lithuanian cores, you can see here, I am taking a border along the group. As you can see, we're going to continue that border here. Just like that to box them out. And then I'm going to go ahead and take Mamel. Now, Mamel we take a look is lithuanian culture guys so we can be confident that there will be lithuanian rebels here if there was another baltic nation who had a core because you see lithuania has no core in this province but it is lithuanian culture so this is where our lithuanian rebels are going to spawn and then what do you think that they're going to do because they do not have a core here lithuanian tag or here we can ensure that they're going to walk here or here spawns here and walks into his own cause you see that so this is the perfect peace deal obviously the peace deal is going to be different to the region that you're in 
but we can guarantee that as long as I do not give military access, another thing to consider is you wouldn't want to peace out if, if the Commonwealth had troops right here, or if they had troops maybe who were about to be exiled and walk in here. But any other province that I'm going to take from the Commonwealth, let's do it outside of this region to get maximum value. And there it is, boys. What we should see here is a Lithuanian rebel faction, and there it is inside of the culture group just to reiterate if we look at the lithuanian tag it's going to work walk into the one of two adjacent provinces which then after five years of occupation will defect even if a rebel faction spawns within inside of your own territory when it lands inside of enemy territory if it occupies those provinces for five years it will enforce its demands so all we need to do is prevent the commonwealth from liberating these and they simply cannot liberate that if they don't have, have military access. So the next move to speed this up, guys, I'm, for as long as it takes here, I'm going to wait until this is at 50. I'm not going to do anything else, even though, you know, we could use this time productively as long as we do not give military access. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and wait until this is at 50%. That's the next move. And then we provoke them at 50%. Percent. All right, guys, let's talk about one more thing. Uh, unfortunately, even after a long time, we're at 10% here. You can actually piss off the province more, as you guys know, by coring it up. It is an option. You might not want to core it. And then, of course, reduce autonomy, increasing unrest. So in this case, we're using it to speed it up because I'm a little bit cocky and confident that we're going to be fine. However, if there is some kind of RNG involved where you're hoping the rebels will do well, you're making a bit of a gamble play. In this case, we're pretty much guaranteed. Um, you can use the reduce autonomy as a second round of unrest. So you can basically spawn rebels. Somehow they fail. You can reduce autonomy, which will create unrest again inside of the province. Alrighty, guys, after many years in this case, Lithuania is ready to be provoked with inside of our own territory obviously completely stable with inside of enemy territory and just to reiterate where do you think he's going to go he's not going to walk into this province is he prussian culture no lithuanian core he's going to walk exactly where we intend him to walk which is right there beautiful and as soon as in this case this is a fort so it'll take some time to fall but uh, we'll cut to the occupation when this falls. There she is, boys. There she is. You can go ahead and look at the province history here to see the exact date, which is the 20, 15, 25, the 2nd of Feb was occupied by rebels. That means, you know, add an additional five years and guess what's going to happen? Let's cut to it, guys. All right, here we are one month out, guys, of an, an additional five years. You can see 1525, 1530. On the 2nd of Feb, exactly, they will enforce their demands. So let's go ahead and prepare our troops for the upcoming war. And this is the real beauty of this move, guys, is not only did I just take a, you know, decent chunk of land, in this case with Dayswap, from the Commonwealth, as per usual... You can see our truce isn't that much longer because I didn't 100% him. But speaking of truce, we will not have a truce with this new nation, as you're about to see. I will say one day before we do this here that a lot of people are going to wonder why don't I release Lithuania. In this case, he established a core here due to the rebel occupation on his culture group. Uh, we will lose all of these cores that I already have. And the only province, the only province that we will obtain are the ones that are occupied by rebels whereas in this case when the tag does not exist including under your own self as a subject the entire thing defects as you can see and we do not have a truce with it in this case jumping straight in with the Deus Vault CB unless the, the rebel faction is still at large where Lithuania will then inherit the troops. They will spawn them with no troops, as you can see. Wow, in this case, he's also way behind in military technology. So this is going to be an absolute breeze, easy, breezy war. We will 100% him really quickly. 
and then jump back in against the Commonwealth. So just to reiterate, this is an Iron Man mode game, achievements enabled, nothing cheaty here, guys. This is just how it is. And a lot of people might think, okay, well, if I'm playing Russia, I'm not going to need help, actually. You know, Russia's a powerful nation defeating the Commonwealth. But this is more about showcasing the principle. Um, you know, a good example. And the tactic here within, you know, creating a horseshoe encircling enemy territory, uh, considering the culture group, ensuring that the rebels walk into their territory by taking some consideration there. And where it's going to be really valuable, of course, is if you were basically playing a slow Russia, like perhaps you were playing Odev, who is going to be quite a slow Russia, and maybe you were able to ally the, the Commonwealth, slowly picking apart Muscovy, and then you're looking for very powerful catch-up mechanic strategies. And uh, I hope that that is, in fact, this is, in fact, exactly that. A very powerful strategy that you guys benefit from all right so this is my game here which i'm actually currently streaming and um i've via animism by going colonial as the nation of scotland which has formed denmark you can see we still have the goodness ideas i've actually spread animism one by one out towards europe so this will turn into uh, norse and this is uh, as a one province minor start on very hard difficulty an attempt to one tag one faith and one culture of the world as norse culture and norse religion but the reason that i'm showcasing this here i can't unpause the game guys because this is what i have been streaming of late but you can see the similarities between this run where we uh, used the actually Danish after forming Denmark we were able to use the expand military you can see the missions out here to push in this direction and uh, I speculate that I will end up as my end game tag as Russia because they're just such a CCR monster for the end of the game but in the meantime you can see this beautiful border and the similarities to the Lithuanian defect which I, I just showed off so in this case my male is actually Prussian and um I'm now rivaling the Commonwealth. They were my ally for a long time. I'm seriously hoping that we can basically switch the Commonwealth with the Ottomans to get some assistance here. If we can pull the Ottomans, then I will have no issue and problem defeating the Commonwealth. Uh, as of right now, on very hard difficulty, they're an absolute monster. But uh, yeah, having recently formed the Commonwealth, the Lithuanian cause, we actually only have a 30 year window before they go away. In this case, I would use my claims, you can see here, these two, um, because it's such a late age of reformation, the reformation just began and that began because we dismantled the empire, there were so few nations, it, that's the reason it's very late. Uh, I still have the ability to make claims off of claims. I'm hoping to get a few more claims out here, but uh, in this case, guys, I would basically take the same sort of uh, horseshoe along the culture here. This one as well, due to the fact that it is a core, I would take the one province here in the Prussian region. We really want to set up a uh, Baltic trading company anyway, which I want to be expanding into the Baltic and really optimize this. We're currently annexing Sweden. Commonwealth's the next most influential. Pull that all through into Lebec. So after taking this, 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 uh, just following along the culture, we would take one province, of course, up here, Lithuanian core, spawn Lithuanian rebels, which are then going to walk into one of these two provinces. So in my case, uh, you know, I just wanted to show that in a really serious run, I definitely do consider these defections Alrighty lads, now that I've shown you guys some of the potential that can be done legitimately on Iron Man mode, such as the huge Lithuanian defection, we're now doing a little bit of cheating here with console commands, just to show you guys how satisfying it can be to actually um, have smaller defections. So what I've done here, is just starting as Byzantium, using this as an example, even though there are many other cases where this can be useful, uh, I've actually switched over to the Mamluks and annex Syria, which begins now in the beginning of the game, but typically the Mamluks annex uh, Syria within a decade or so of the beginning of the game anyway. So we're going to turn Win Wars on 
and basically I'm just cheating to get the result that I want, right? <clears throat> We're going to, in this case, assume that you've come through the Byzantium mission trees. And we're going to use these new claims that we have. But the thing is that these claims that we have, let's look along the coastline. Looks like about 16 dev is going to be the highest uh, dev here and therefore the better um, war goal. The thing is, guys, as I'll demonstrate in a second, the amount of permanent claims that we have here is actually far greater than the amount of war score that I have to take the provinces. So even if we were to win the war legitimately, um, you can see that it, it is simply too expensive. And even with Diplo ideas giving us 20% more, you most likely are going to have some left over. So here's where you can get a little bit creative, guys. Notice out here in the desert, these are really low dev. So let's go ahead and take those. And what I'll do is I'll come along the permaclaims like this. And do you see how that is, in this sense, the perfect peace deal? Because not only is it, you know, just about a, a clean 100%, and it's following along the claims, therefore it gives us no uh, Diplo cost, but it is also completely encircling these provinces. And what we should find here, a little bit more cheating, just pretend we're playing this game, we now have a Syrian rebel faction. There it is. Uh, surprisingly, actually, in in uh, so it is it is always interesting to see what exact rebel factions are going to spawn. But it looks like there are Lebanese which take priority, and even Mameluk themselves. Uh, thankfully, I do in fact have Syrian unrest elsewhere. And uh, all that we would need to do, of course, uh, in this case, it looks like we'd probably want to take this core to prevent them from walking into QQ. So this is another thing that we're happy to do as a Byzantium nation. Go ahead and take some of these claims. Beautiful. I'm overextended in this case, so <laughs> maybe don't go quite so crazy in your game and there it is we have the syrian unrest uh all that it would take is for the um syrian rebels to provoke them as soon as they walk into this land that's also the assumption guys if you're playing a real game you would have walked down here and you would have killed these units so this is a big taboo when doing the strategy is to actually have units within the region which needs to be occupied to defect but you know that that's it that's the principle demonstrated right there guys and uh the beauty of this of course is when Sirius spawns in um, he's going to have no army assuming you've killed the rebel faction and uh unless they have a fort so this might this might have a um, garrison but all other provinces will, will have zero garrison including their capital of course and we'll take it over nice and clean it's just a great way to be more aggressive and more efficient with the same amount of claims and basically you know bridging going beyond a whole nother level in regards to doing damage to certain nations and in regards to the limitation of truce timers so i hope that this benefited you guys i hope that you learned something about rebel defections thank you very much for watching and i'll see you live or i'll see you in another video